I have a few questions that I'm going to start off with because, uh, you know, even just this morning, I got you know, an email on, on Google Plus about the humanism atheism question. So let's start with that. Is humanism atheism? And the answer to that question is no, it's not. Humanism is a secular philosophy, meaning it's not a religious philosophy. It's focused on the practical aspect of living as opposed to the spiritual, uh, supernatural aspects of living. We don't take supernatural things into account when we're thinking about things. So it is without religion, but that doesn't mean it's atheist. Now, granted, most people who are without religion would classify themselves as atheists. But not all do. Some people just say, well, I'm spiritual, uh, but not religious. Right? Um, there's also agnostics who are without religion. Uh, even some theists, you know, their conception of God is non adventurous So as long as you're focusing on, you know, the practical day-to-day -day aspects and you're not taking into account religious ideas in your moral reasoning, that's, that's really what humanism is about. Now, the next question I, got, I get is, um, because the humanist philosophy is such an attractive philosophy, um, because it's, it's geared towards helping make the world a better place, humanists are committed to making the world a better place. We're committed to living our lives with justice and compassion and reason uh, for the benefit of all humankind. And we're not the only ones that want to make the world a better place. You know, religious people do too. And when they come across humanism and our rationales for why we want to make the world a better place, they, they tend to agree with it wholeheartedly. Um, and there's been some talk, you know, where is humanism, did humanism arise as a secular philosophy or was it religious philosophy? Because certainly there were humanists in the Renaissance and they were all religious. Well, let's, let's kind of clear this up, historically speaking. The Renaissance of the humanists were classical scholars. A humanist, one of the definitions of humanist is that you're a classical, you're a scholar of the humanities. So if you go to a humanities department anywhere in the, in the world, the professors of the humanities are likely to refer to themselves as humanists. All right. And it's not the same meaning of humanist as someone who's following the humanist philosophy. So the, the Renaissance humanists were scholars of the humanities. And that's the way that word is. And yes, they were religious. And some of them were also humanistic in their approach to life. The word humanism, to describe the philosophy of humanism as we now know it, originated about 100 years ago, um, late 1800s, early 1900s. And it was coined by some UU ministers, Unitarian ministers, to specifically describe a secular approach to ethics and morality and living a good life of fulfillment to the greater good of humanity. So from its inception as a philosophy, as a named philosophy a hundred years ago, it was coined to describe a secular philosophy. Let's talk a little bit about what humanism is because we know a little bit about the history now. Let's talk about what humanism is. Humanism is a secular philosophy of life, according to the American Humanist Association. Humanism is a secular philosophy of life that, without supernaturalism, affirms our ability and responsibility to lead ethical lives of personal fulfillment that aspire to the greater good of humanity. To put it more simply, uh, for me, my personal motto I wrote when I was uh, 11 was, live your life to the fullest, love other people, and leave the world a better place. And, and that's pretty much it. It's, it's a choice to be the best, most ethical person you can be. Um, not because you're afraid of what God does or doesn't want, but because that's who you want to be. This is how you choose to live your life, because you think there's benefits to you here and now to living your life this way. Why should you care about humanism? Well, uh, it's because humanism, it turns out, is one of the most influential philosophies of all time. Like if you remember a philosopher from ancient history, it's probably because they were either humanists or humanistically inclined. This philosophy is very, very powerful. How it encourages you to think about yourself 
in relationship to every other human being on the planet, how it encourages you to think about your responsibilities to those other people is very, very powerful. And this is why, you know, when you look at the civil rights movement, you know, the, the people behind it, um, A. Philip Randolph, Bayard Rustin, people like that, they were humanists. When you look at the disabilities movement, Helen Keller was a humanist. She was one of the founders of the first humanist society of New York, uh, Underground Railroad. Harriet Tubman was a humanist. <laughs> you know, I mean, these we're movers. And there's not a lot of us that label ourselves as humanists, but those who do really have a tremendous impact on the world. Uh, Albert Einstein, humanist, helped found the first humanist society of New York and was a member of the American Humanist Association until his death. Um, Kurt Vonnegut. Humanist, until his death, he was the honorary president of the American Humanist Association. Christopher Hitchens, humanist. Salman Rushdie, yeah, we've all heard of him, humanist. Um, you know, name the, the famous writers, they're probably humanists. Name the famous social activists. Faye Waddleton of Planned Parenthood, humanist. <laughs> Ted Turner, humanist. You know, when you look at who we are, fifth, I think, I think 22 Nobel laureates in chemistry right now that are alive all self-describe themselves as humanists. We, we, we really are overrepresented in, um, in the influential circles of the world. So understanding what motivates these influential people, I think, is, is pretty important. The final question that I wanted to talk about today is where does humanist morality come from? If it doesn't come from God, where does it come from? That's the question I get a lot. And the answer is that humanist morality comes from us. It comes from humans. It's, it's not religiously inspired. It's secularly inspired. Um, and it basically comes down to this. If it helps people, it's good. If it hurts people, it's bad. If it's going to do both, or if you can't help but doing both, try to do the most good and the least harm. It's, it's, it's very, very simple. Um, what I think makes humanism unique is that while, while most humans share this value system, regardless of where you go um, and how you were raised and what you believe or don't believe, this is a common human approach to morality. It, it really is. I mean, there's been studies on global ethics that show that people value the same things all over the world and they judge right and wrong the same way all over the world regardless of their religion, regardless of their culture, and so forth. So this is common human basis of morality. And that's exactly why it's a humanist basis for morality. The difference between the humanist approach and, say, the religious approach is that the humanist doesn't, you know, doesn't ascribe our values to a religion. We think they're sufficient unto themselves. We understand that a lot of people don't think they're sufficient unto themselves, and that's fine for them. This is the humanist approach, right?